In today's video, I'm going to talk about the five reasons you should be using DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve has definitely, definitely been growing by leaps and bounds lately. And it's no wonder. It's a fantastic product. And today I'm going to talk about the five reasons why I think you should either start using it or take a serious look at DaVinci Resolve right now. now. I've been using it since version 12. And 12 was, it was good and it was very usable. But 12.5 was a major update. And that's when I was like, that's it, I'm switching, I'm, I'm dropping Final Cut Pro, I'm going full boat into DaVinci Resolve. Well, that's 12.5, today we're at 15.2. So leaps and bounds better than it was two years ago. And the development track is just on fire. New features all the time, really cool stuff. They really, really listen to the users and they give us what we ask for. We provide feedback and we get features. And it's a fantastic relationship with the user community and Blackmagic Design to help keep making DaVinci Resolve the tool that we need it to be. So five reasons why, and the, uh, there's a lot of detail to some of these, so bear with me here. Number one, DaVinci Resolve is a full-blown editor these days. Years ago, wasn't the case. People used to do all their editing in Premiere or Avid or Final Cut and then ship that over to Resolve to do the color grading. And Resolve was known for its color grading. It was the color grading tool and still is. Most motion pictures that you see are graded in DaVinci Resolve. They may be edited in something else still, but color grading is the domain of DaVinci Resolve. But once Blackmagic Design purchased it, it has become a full-blown NLE on par with anything else out there. So it is definitely a powerful editor. It does have full 4K support, even in the free version. And that's a big difference. There is a free version. That's, you do not get that with Premiere or Final Cut. It is a free version that you can do almost everything with. The few things that you have to pay for are video noise reduction, some specific OFX plugins, and then some higher end things like uh, some collaborative tools, uh, 3D stereoscopic editing, um, and uh, that's kind of about it. Uh, the, there is an advantage of using Studio in that it can support multiple GPUs. So the free version, if you have one video card, it can utilize that, no problem. But if you have a machine that has multiple video cards, multiple GPUs in it, it can take advantage of that and you can get a nice speed improvement. So there is that. But even by itself, it has extremely good performance. On, um, I, I do almost everything on this 2016 MacBook Pro 13 inch. It's got a pretty low end video card and I use it pretty much exclusively for my editing. On bigger projects, things that are more complex, I do have a 5K iMac and it just screams on that machine. So the performance is top notch and I find it to be faster than Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro using my MacBook uh, Pro from 2016. Uh, it was the first to really have H.265 support in it. So that was a big win for DaVinci Resolve. And the 265 playback in here is fantastic. It, it works very, very well. I mean, it is a very processor intensive codec. So, uh, you know, if you're working with a lot of stuff, you, you might need a B for your machine, but that's just H.265 in general. That's not having to do with Resolve. Resolve does it very well. One of the things that sold me originally on switching to Resolve was its speed ramping tools. What you can do in speed ramping, you might be able to pull off in some of the other ones, but not nearly as easily. So the speed ramping tools are phenomenal in DaVinci Resolve. Like I said, it is the best color grading tool. So bar none. Uh, it's way better than Lumetri or anything else out there. It rocks on color grading. So Resolve in and of itself competes with Final Cut Pro and Adobe Premiere. So 
uh, but there's a lot more to it than that. Number two reason is Fusion. Now Fusion used to be a standalone product uh, that was just called Fusion, and that was Blackmagic's 3D compositing system, which equivalent would be After Effects. So you can do 3D composition, 3D titles, particle effects, uh, all kinds of special effects, video uh, compositing in Fusion, making it a very, very powerful tool in and of itself. And now Fusion is built into DaVinci Resolve. So instead of having to go outside to another app like After Effects, you're doing it all within DaVinci Resolve, which I think is phenomenal. And again, that's included. So now you have a tool that competes with Adobe After Effects built into the editor. So big win there. Number three is Fairlight. Now, I personally don't use Fairlight that often. Most of my videos are things like this. I don't need to get into super high-end audio production, but if you do, Fairlight is extremely powerful. You can set up multiple buses and uh, you can do 3D placement of sound. Anything that you could ever need to do when it comes to audio mastering, you can do in Fairlight. It is the top of the line in terms of audio processing. So now that's a tool that competes with Adobe Audition. In fact, it has more features than Adobe Audition. Now there's a couple things in Audition that I kind of like, but uh, Fairlight is a super, super powerful audio processing system built in to Resolve. You're not paying extra money for it. It's all there. So now think about it. You have to get the Adobe Creative Cloud. So in order to get Premiere, Audition and After Effects. Those three things basically built in to DaVinci Resolve. So fourth item on my list is crazy powerful tools. Things that no other system have out there unless you go into After Effects or some other compositing engine. Power Windows, phenomenal tool for masking. You can do circles and ellipses and rectangles and polygons and do really powerful masking, but not just masking and then having to keyframe it, it can do auto tracking as well. So that gives it a whole range of additional capabilities that previously weren't even possible in any other uh, nonlinear editor. What, like I said, without having to then jump over to something like After Effects. So super powerful with uh, power windows and the tracking ability has fantastic image stabilization built in, so that's a big win. Uh, the color qualifier allows you to pick a color and, and modify it, change the colors, change the hues, the saturations, the luminance, all kinds of cool things that you can do with the color qualifier. Now this is just a few tools to name you know, a, a vast majority, and I'm only touching on the ones that are in the free version of Resolve. Once you get into the paid version, there's uh, video noise reduction, additional plugins, and, and some other cool things. But uh, the free version of Resolve has everything that I'm talking about in it. Now, the fifth reason, most importantly, is the price. So the average person only needs the free version until you need something like the video noise reduction. That to me was a biggie. I, I used to do a lot of more low light stuff with a GH4, noise was a big problem. So having noise reduction built into my app was a big win for me. The only other way to do it when you had Resolve was to then purchase Neat Video, which was like $275. Well, if I'm gonna spend almost $300, why don't I spend $300 and just buy the studio version of Resolve and have that tool added as well as a bunch of other stuff. So the full price of the studio version of Resolve is $299. Coincidentally, the same exact price as Final Cut Pro. However, when you compare that to the Adobe subscription, well, to get all these features, you would need the Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, which is 50 bucks a month. That's $600 a year. So just in the span of one year, using Resolve instead of Adobe, you've saved yourself $300. Now multiply that over many years of using Adobe right here, 
and I have spent well in excess of $10,000 with Adobe. So to now have a product for 300 that does all those other things is just mind blowing. Now, some other cool things that it can do is it can work directly with DNG files. Now, whether you want to just put together a, a time lapse from DNG files and do all your color grading right there, instead of having to go into something like Lightroom, convert them to JPEGs, and then bring the JPEGs into Resolve, Resolve can work directly with DNG files. Now, the other advantage of being able to work with DNG files is that it can work with Cinema DNG files. So you have the full power of Cinema DNG RAW right at your fingertips if you're using DaVinci Resolve. Now DaVinci Resolve also now supports the new Blackmagic RAW, which is a fantastic codec right now only on the Blackmagic uh, Ursa cameras. So uh, it's not that common, but if you have those cameras, that opens up a whole nother realm of possibilities for you. What I do wanna see and has not been announced yet is support for ProRes RAW. That would be nice. I'm sure it'll come down the road, but I don't use ProRes RAW, so don't really care right now. But the fact that you have an extremely powerful uh, nonlinear editor, you have Fusion, you have Fairlight, extremely powerful tools, and most people only need the free version, there is absolutely no reason not for you to at least try out and see if DaVinci Resolve can do what you want it to do. And then if you decide you need to buy it, it's only $299. So that's my five reasons why you should check out DaVinci Resolve. This has been Kerry with Learn DaVinci Resolve. Thanks for watching. Be sure and subscribe, like the videos. I really appreciate all the support from all of you out there. The questions, the comments, the feedback that I get has been absolutely fantastic. And if you subscribe, be sure and click on that bell icon to be notified every time I put out a new video. So again, thanks for watching and I will catch you next time. Bye-bye.